This video is a short introduction to heat exchangers and basic principles of its design. Firstly, what are heat exchangers? As the name implies, heat exchangers are used to exchange heat between two fluids. We have one fluid which is hot and another fluid which is cold. So the heat exchanger is an equipment where hot and cold fluid come into contact through some uh, uh, mechanical barrier and transfer heat. So this is the simplest form of a heat exchanger in which you have, this is called as a shell and tube heat exchanger. It's called so because you have tubes inside, which are pipes, and then the outer covering outside of the tube is called as a shell side. So there is uh, what is shown here is a transparent view of the internals. So you have a cylindrical casing in which you have these pipes inside. So between the pipes, outside the pipes, it is called as a shell side and inside the pipe is a tube side. So what we have here is an flow which goes through the pipes and in inlet of uh, the cold fluid. Cold fluid usually enters the pipes and exits on this side. Hot fluid, on the other hand, comes from the top, enters the shell side, heats up the fluid, uh, heats up the pipe, pipes here, and which in turn heats up the fluid, and then exits here. So inside the pipe, it is an internal flow. So the heat transfer coefficients would correspond to an internal flow heat transfer coefficient. Outside the pipe, it is an external flow and heat transfer coefficients correspond to the external flow heat transfer coefficients. In general, a heat, a heat exchanger can be uh, thought of uh, a, a hot liquid coming and exchanging heat with a cold liquid and going out. Similarly, cold liquid coming in and going out. The hot liquid, because of its virtue of being higher temperature, always the uh, temperature of the hot liquid always decreases in the direction of the flow and uh, vice versa for the cold fluid. The cold fluid's temperature always increases along the flow direction. Now the flow direction itself can be two different class of uh, ways. One is called as a parallel flow or a co-current flow and other is counter current flow or counter flow. So in parallel flow, both the hot fluid and the cold fluid flow in the same direction. In the counter flow, they flow in the opposite direction. There is another uh, uh, category, uh, another design geometry for uh, heat exchangers, which is called the number of passes. The number of passes is the number of turns the fluid makes inside the heat exchanger. In the simplest case, which we saw here, there are no turns. So the liquid enters here and exits here. This fluid ent enters on this side and exits on that side. So there are no major turns here. So this is called as number of passes. So this is schematically represented here. The hot fluid enters and then goes here. There are no U-turns. Whereas here, which is called as a single pass uh, pipe, the pipes come here and make a U-turn and then exit. So what is shown here is the cutout shell. The shell here has, has been removed to show the internals. So had the shell been there, the shell would have had a single pass. So the fluid enters and then goes. So this is a single pass for the pipe sorry, single pass for the shell and double pass for the pipe. So there are various designs where you have multiple passes for shell and tube side. The temperature profile in uh, these uh, different arrangements are as follows. In the parallel flow or the co-current flow, the temperature, we notice that temperature of the hot fluid always decreases and temperature of cold fluid always increases. So this would mean that uh, in this particular case, because they are flowing in the same direction, the temperature of each of the fluid approaches to the 
other value. So at infinitely long uh, distance, suppose you have an infinitely long heat exchanger, in parallel flow, the outlet temperatures of both this uh, fluids will be the same. So it will keep on transferring heat till the temperature becomes equal. Whereas in the counter current flow or counter flow, the flow is in the opposite direction. So in this case, so the inlet fluid is here, inlet cold uh, temperature is here. This is the outlet of the cold fluid. This is the inlet of the hot fluid. This is the outlet of the hot fluid. Now, in this case, if you see, if you have an infinitely long uh, heat exchanger, that is along the x-axis is infinitely long, then what happens is the inlet of the cold fluid is fixed. You cannot change that. Only the outlet will change. So while, when you have an infinitely long uh, fluid, uh, heat exchanger, then the outlet temperature of the cold fluid will approach the inlet temperature of the hot fluid. This is in a case when this is more steep compared to this. There is an also another case where if this uh, hot fluid is more steep compared to the cold fluid, then the outlet temperature of the hot fluid will approach the inlet temperature of the cold fluid. There are also various other possibilities where uh, these both could be in parallel or one of them could be uh, could not will not show any variation such as in the case of condensation or boiling. There are two broad types of heat exchanger calculation, which is the entire motivation of this chapter. The first is called as a heat exchanger design. That is, you have a certain requirement of temperatures. So you have uh, the cold fluid at some temperature, hot fluid at some temp temperature. And you are asking, give me a, a design of a heat exchanger that will rise the temperature, for example, from TCI, which is cold inlet, to a desired value of TCO. So in this case, we have specified these both temperatures, which is given, usually because I know how much uh, temperature a hot fluid is available, how much temperature a cold fluid is available. Here, I want to heat this particular fluid. For example, let's say before passing into a reactor or to a distillation column, we want to heat it to a given temperature. So then this temperature is also given. So we have three temperatures. So if three temperatures are available, then we can use energy balance, which we'll do in the next video, to determine the other temperature. So in this case, we have all the four temperatures specified, but we don't know what is the size that is to be used. So this problem of finding the size, what is the size? Answering that question is a question of heat exchanger design. That is you're designing a particular heat exchanger for achieving a desired temperature. So this is done by, can be done by two methods. One is called as the LMTD method. We have heard of LMTD before, which is log mean temperature difference. And the other method is called epsilon NTU method or effectiveness NTU method. We'll see both these methods in detail lectures, but for the moment, uh, keep in mind that for the design problem, these are the knowns, this is the desired, and this temperature can be determined. So if all the four temperatures are there, then we can use either of LMTD method or epsilon NTU method to determine the surface area or the heat exchanger area. The second class of problems is called as performance calculating problems. In this case, as usual, we have the uh, inlet temperature of uh, the hot fluid and the cold fluid, we also have the area. Earlier area was unknown, but now we have the area. So if we have the area, for example, there is already a heat exchanger available to you, or you can go to the market and uh, look at two different types of heat exchangers. You don't know which of the heat exchangers is going to fit your requirement. 
So given a heat exchanger with a given area, but we don't know what will be the outlet temperatures of this. So in this case, we call it as a performance calculation where we have the inlet temperatures and the area. In this particular case, then the outlet temperature is unknown. We have to find the outlet temperature, let's say of the cold fluid. So in that case, uh, we can the easiest method to follow is what is called as the epsilon NTU method, which are the effectiveness NTU method, in which you can directly get the outlet temperature. You can also use the uh, LMTD method. If you use the LMTD method, it is a little bit cumbersome in that it has to go through an iterative process. So, because LMTD means that you're going to calculate, you need all the four temperatures, you have only two temperatures. So, what you have to do is you have to guess a TCO, that is the cold fluid outlet. So, if you guess the uh, TCO, you will be able to find the LMTD exactly same as this. And then using the LMTD method, you can get a new value of TCO for a given area. Now, this new value of TCO may not be same as the guess value of TCO. So which means it is not converged. It's an iterative process. Then again, you have to go through this process, keep iterating. And then finally, after convergence, you will get, get a final TCO value. That is a cold fluid outlet. So in both the cases, epsilon NTU method is a straightforward way to do it. The LMTD method is, although simple, in this particular case, it involves a iterative procedure. In all these calculations, we would require what is known as the overall heat transfer coefficient. We have come across overall heat transfer coefficient before, but we'll uh, recollect this in the case of a shell and tube heat exchanger, or in any heat exchanger where you have two sides. One is the outer side, which has got a fluid which is moving, and there is an inner side which has got a, a fluid which is moving. What is shown here is the pipe wall which acts as a barrier. Now, if you look at the heat transfer resistances, we have these at the uh, these are the various resistances. Usually, we'll on, only have boundary layer on the outside. Then there is conduction here and boundary layer in the inside. However, when you operate heat, run, uh, heat exchanger equipments for a very long time, particularly when you use corrosive liquids, or uh, uh, in the case of, in this case, there's an oil, uh, crude oil, which is heated up, which develops what is known as fouling. Fouling means uh, solid residues gets deposited on the pipe walls inside as well as outside. So this is a solid material, which is like the solid wall of the pipe. So, which has got a finite thermal conductivity. Therefore, we need to take into account the fouling factors. So, fouling factors uh, are also included within this resistance calculation. So, we have hot side boundary layer, then fouling conduction, then wall conduction, then again fouling conduction on the inside or on the uh, cold side. And then you have cold side boundary layer. So the overall heat transfer coefficient U, the expression for that is sum of resistances. So the first resistance is inner side. Then there is an inner side fouling coefficient is like a resistance. Then you have, if it's a uh, pipe with a diameter D, D, I and DO are the two inside and outside diameters. So you have a ln uh, D0 by DI dependence there. Then you have the outside uh, fouling conduction. And finally, the heat uh, convective heat transfer coefficient for the hot side boundary layer. So this is a useful formula, which we'll be using in both these methods of LMTD and epsilon NTU calculations. To summarize heat exchangers, Heat exchangers are uh, used for transferring heat between two fluids across a solid barrier. There are two types of uh, arrangements, uh, parallel flow and counter flow. 
and within these arrangements you can also have single pass or multiple pass and in heat exchanger calculation there are two major calculations which are one is for designing the heat exchanger other is for calculating the performance of the heat exchanger given an area and uh, we saw two keywords that is lmtd method and uh, effectiveness interview method for doing the design and performance calculations in the next couple of videos we'll learn more about lmtd method and effectiveness interview method thank you